You're watching Personal Finance with Coach Kelvin. Let's get into the video. Hey guys, Coach Kelvin here. And today I wanna to talk to you about how I've been able to generate multiple sources of income while in my 20s. So the first income stream that I wanna to talk to you about is actually just general income from working a job. So this is just your regular take home pay from working, okay? Now I currently work between two jobs. So I'm a self-employed personal trainer and I contract to a particular gym that I work at. And I basically receive a, like an hourly rate for the hours I work at this gym. If I, under that ABN or Australian business number, if I sell any of my own services, so personal training, if I sell any programming, anything like that as well, that is income that's all coming in from working as a personal trainer. So that is my first source of income. And basically this is my, my job that I'm passionate about. And even once I reach fire, my plan is to continue doing this all the way into the future. The second job that I work is driving a forklift in a transport business. And this is my second income source, but still counts as income from working, okay? So with this, with this job, I get uh, very easy, low stress work and it pays fairly decently. I get paid at the same time every week, which takes out the stress of chasing down invoices or worried about, am I gonna get enough work over public holidays, etc. Because this job is very consistent, it's available, and I'm very lucky to have it on top of what I already do with personal training. Now, the second source of income that I wanna tell you guys about is from rental properties. So I currently have two rented out and they generate a fair amount of income on top of what the minimal interest payment is every month. So I'm currently paying both off on a fixed rate of 2.49% and they are currently bringing in more cash flow than what is the minimum requirement to pay that with. Now with this fixed rate, I'm able to slightly pay off a little more every year of up to about $10,000 on each, on each of those properties, but I'm not going too hard on investing in my properties I'm using that income to then invest into other vehicles, which can supercharge my wealth creation. So I find that that income is actually way better put towards my shares portfolio, because right now the interest rate is so low. And if I were to uh, come out of the end of this fixed term and my interest rate in property goes past say 5%, then I'm likely to start diverting my funds back to trying to pay down that loan a lot quicker. Now, my rental income, it's uh, very consistent. I have both of my places with tenants in them. Um, one is on short, short term leases and one is on long term lease. Um, and they are diversified in different states of Australia, which makes things a little easier based on if one market's performing well and one isn't, it sort of balances out a little bit. Although my, my property, which I have in Queensland, Australia, is worth a fair amount more than my one here in Western Australia. Okay. Now, my third source of income, which I have, is from interest earned. Now, I have some money in a bank account, which earns a low rate of interest, and this is uh, pretty common right now. There's not many high yield interest savings accounts, but I actually am getting that return by keeping it in an offset account, offsetting my mortgage. So any money I save in interest is technically earned at a tax-free rate, because if you're saving in interest, not earning it, then you're not having to pay an income tax on it. You're just reducing your interest bill. So offset accounts are a really unique thing and really wonderful that uh, we have access to it here in Australia, especially with the low interest rates we have, we can just chuck as much money as we want into this offset account, lowering what our interest bill is gonna be every month because it basically calculates your mortgage as whatever the loan amount is, minus how many funds you have in that offset account, okay? So if you had a mortgage of 400,000 left on your loan, and you have 50,000 sitting in your uh, offset account, you basically would only be paying interest on that $350,000 because you've used the 50,000 in your offset account to literally wipe out 50,000 on your main loan, okay? Now, a lot of bank accounts here in Australia or banks that offer an offset will generally charge a monthly fee of like $10 or something. So you wanna explore uh, the better fixed mortgage packages or variable mortgage packages that offer an offset, but don't offer you a fee. 
Now you can negotiate this with your bank. You might be able to have it absorbed in other fees if you have uh, a credit card package, etc. But that's uh, something we can explore in a later video because there are definitely ways to efficiently use these services if you have access to them. The other source of interest income I have is a platform called Plenty, which is a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform where you basically get to act as if you are the bank instead of you banking, okay? So if I wanted to take out a loan in a typical sense, I could go and see a bank or, or my parents or something, um, or most people would have a friend they could possibly go to, but if you're looking for a large loan, typically you go to a bank, okay? Now, if you wanted to take out a loan from the bank, they're gonna charge you a loan establishment fee, they're going to charge you a rate of interest and give you a term in which you need to pay that back. So basically what I'm doing using that platform Plenty is I'm placing my money up on an exchange and someone else can loan it through that platform. They will pay a premium to borrow that money, I will earn an interest rate back, and then Plenty earns a little bit of money as well. Now, why this is a great investment is Plenty offers a thing called a provision fund, which is like a safety net, so that they take some of the funds that they earn from that loan, they place it into this provision fund, and that can actually pay out any loss of capital or interest if your borrower is unable to pay it back. Now, this does mean that the borrower is paying a slightly higher rate than what you are being returned to you. But what's great about this is you are essentially not having to source the borrower if you are the investor on the platform. The borrower comes to the platform and then they are matched to you with the loan. You don't have the flexibility of choosing who can take that loan from you. But most of the time, Plenty is looking for credit worthy borrowers and it's um, fairly safe in my experience. And to date, Plenty has not uh, gone a period of time without returning capital or interest to any of their investors. In fact, 100% of loans to date have been repaid and they have loaned out over a billion dollars. So it's pretty unreal and it's an amazing Australian fintech company. Now, if you guys are interested in learning about peer-to-peer -peer lending, I can make a further video on this and I actually have a referral link in my description below where if you were to play a $1,000 investment into the five-year lending market, you can get a return of you know five to six point five percent somewhere in that window, and you'll get a fifty-dollar bonus for using my referral link. So that fifty-dollar bonus is immediately a five percent return, and then you can reinvest that fifty dollars to grow and speed up that compounding effect essentially. Now the fourth source of income that I have generated in my twenties is dividend income from shares investing. So I talked about this in my video about dividend reinvestment plans, but I'm gonna go into it a bit more here. So every time I buy shares, I'm looking for the projected income that I can generate from owning those shares. So if I'm looking in, into businesses that can create really good cash flow, what I'm after is actually businesses that return some of that cash flow to shareholders. What I want to do is generate other sources of income so that I have flexibility in where I receive that money from and I can potentially subsidize some of the work I need to do to live later on in life. If I choose to retire early, pull myself out of my second job and just focus on one, etc. Now, this dividend income is really cool because three times a year, four times a year or twice a year, however frequently your dividends are paid to you, you are able to then take that money and reinvest. So this speeds up the compounding effect. When you receive dividends, they are classed as general income, so you pay an income tax on these. However, as you have a lower bracket of income, for example, when you reach early retirement, you're then going to have the, the tax-free threshold of up to $18,000 when you're here in uh, Australia. And this means you can earn a fair amount of money from your dividends every year and not need to pay income tax on that. Obviously, after that threshold, you then pay your nominal tax rate and the more income you produce, yes, you'll have to pay a higher rate of tax on it. Dividend income is generally very stable through uh, periods of time when markets are very volatile. You have some companies that still continue to pay amazing uh, dividend yields. For example, Fortescue Metal Groups, that has just paid phenomenal dividends throughout the financial year of 2020, start of 2021. And this is mostly down to the fact that the iron ore price here has been phenomenal. And they're getting a lot of uh, exporting demand. Now, we have other, other sectors like the financial sector. Banks were actually uh, instructed to reduce their dividend payout ratio 
and this was to protect funds for liquidity if people needed them whilst we had a uh, pause on mortgage repayments etc so the the index funds which generally paid out a consistent rate or a dividend yield that was affected a little bit because of this pause on um, bank dividends being at the same rate, they could only pay up to 50% of that. And other companies obviously struggling financially in the last financial year could not pay out at the same ratio. Though the volatile price of shares in the last 12 months proves that if you had to sell down your portfolio to live on, this can be extremely risky because by selling down your portfolio, say March 23rd of 2020, you would have missed out on some of the most amazing recovery uh, period in the stock market ever. This has been such a fast recovery and you would have earned back over 30 to 40 percent had your um, Had you been buying in at that time instead of selling out? So we want to stay in the market as long as possible Therefore dividend income makes more sense once you reach retirement as you're not having to sell down your portfolio Potentially affecting your your wealth later on when you are reliant on a dividend income you can even start reinvesting some of those dividends if the growth starts to pay out more than what your living expenses are. So let's say you got to a, a period of time where you were, you were able to live off say 6% of your invested portfolio, but you only needed 4% to live off. You could then reinvest 2% every single year, letting that compounding effect grow your portfolio further and further and further. And that means you're going to get wealthier, generating more income, therefore, you'll be able to spend that later on if you wish, or if uh, some sort of emergency medical expense, et cetera, comes up, you are well prepared for that. So those are the income sources that I have been able to accumulate in my 20s. I obviously plan to add more as I go on. You know, when you have intellectual property, you can earn royalties. If someone writes a book, every sale, they get a commission back, et cetera. You could do artwork and stuff like that. And this is something else that can generate money down the track. I'm not uh, actually spending any time working on that yet, but this is definitely a possibility later down the line. Now guys, thank you for watching. That's how I plan to go about my wealth creation over the next however long it takes me. But I plan to hit early retirement, sort of mid thirties to early forties. And I hope you guys come along on this journey. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.